So here's my truth. I have Ebola fever. <laughs> Not the actual fever that comes with having Ebola. If that were the case, I, I don't think I'd be sitting here doing a podcast. <laughs> Not this podcast, anyway. I'd probably do Mark Maron's podcast. Uh. <laughs> For the past 10 days, I've been following the story with intense interest. The death toll in West Africa is now at roughly 1,000. It will increase, no doubt, perhaps dramatically, before scientists and infectious disease professionals get the epidemic under control. As most of you know, two Americans, Dr. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull, Christian missionaries who were treating Ebola patients in Liberia, have gotten sick themselves. I'm not a religious man. I'm aggressively agnostic. But it's impossible not to be impressed with Brantley and Wrightbull, unless you're soulless, publicity-starved fourth graders like Donald Trump and Ann Coulter. <laughs> so the missionaries' charity, Samaritan's Purse, worked with the CDC to bring Brantley and Wrightbull back home to the States to get the best care possible. In reading these stories, I've learned the first key to surviving Ebola is supportive care. Fluids, blood, monitoring, things American hospitals excel at, things that keep your organs from failing long enough for you to fight off the disease. The second key is to stay the fuck away from Ann Coulter and Donald Trump. <laughs> Normally, I support a media blackout of these two science-denying, fear-mongering Kardashians, but I can't resist this week. For years, whenever these two had a war to support, an opportunity to cheerlead sending young American men into harm's way, they'd hide behind the military, using soldiers, airmen, and Marines to camouflage the ignorance of their position. But in this case, they were both willing and eager to do what the military never does, leave an American behind on the battlefield. Mm. Trump started this on Twitter. He said, Ebola patient will be brought to the U.S. in a few days. Now I know for sure that our leaders are incompetent. Keep them out of here! <laughs> the last part was in caps. My godson likes to use caps, too. He's nine. But Trump wasn't done. The next day he tweeted this, I swear this is true. The U.S. cannot allow Ebola-infected people back. People that go to faraway places to help out are great but must suffer the consequences. Uh, what? <laughs> suffer the consequences. Who talks like that other than poorly written movie villains and Vladimir Putin? <laughs> Coulter then wrote a blog post that's overflowing with meanness, ignorance, and un-American lack of compassion. You could pick any sentence and find something hideous. It's like shooting Ebola patients in a barrel, which I presume is how a Dr. Coulter would treat the disease. <laughs> But I'll read this sentence because it adds a little racism to the mix. <laughs> Despite the runaway success of Midnight Basketball, she writes, mm. a healthy chunk of those children go on to murder other children, uh. rape grandmothers, bury little girls alive, and then eat a sandwich. Before adding, so no, there's nothing for a Christian to do here in the U.S. Kent Brantley and Nancy Wrightbull are examples of what is best about America. Trump and Coulter obviously represent America at its worst. <laughs>